Hello, my name is Brent Calthop, president of Urshan College and Urshan Graduate School of Theology. And today I'm here to join you for the Urshan Leadership Minute. Thank you for being a part of our weekly vlog as we talk about organizational leadership, leaders, followers, the church, and then our mission into the world. We've been talking over the last few weeks about teamwork, about working together in the body, how Paul describes the church, how Jesus operated. Jesus operated as teams, the greatest leader of all. He brought 12 to his side, three in his inner circle. He had 70 of the larger team, and when he sent them out, it was team ministry, two by two by two. Paul, we see that example throughout the scriptures. Uh, Peter, John, all work together in the kingdom of God. That's just sort of how it's always been. Nothing great can be accomplished by just an individual. It's when we work together. And as a result, we need to make sure we're doing the best uh, in working together. And one of the things we even touched on last week that I want to sort of expand a little bit this week is to talk about the importance of character and working together in relationship, interpersonal relationships. There's conflict that is going to come upon any team and we need to be able to manage conflict. And it starts with me. Obviously, we have to take personal responsibility for all of our, our relationships and to realize the first thing that I can do, as we emphasized more last week, is be a person of character. Emerson said it like this, what you are shouts so loudly in my ears, I cannot hear what you say. He's saying that our behaviors, not just our theories, but the way we live out reveals our theology. The scripture says that um, we, you know, you can see the love we have for God by keeping his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That the person who says I, I love him or love neighbor and then we don't behave accordingly, that this is a lack of integrity, that our words and our behaviors are not in alignment and you know something's wrong. And so this is why character is so important. First of all, as we mentioned, it's the bedrock of trust. And we have a tendency to always sort of give ourselves the pass many times and then hold other people to a higher standard. In fact, uh, theorists talk about the fundamental attribution error. The fundamental attribution error. And what the fundamental attribution error is, is that there is a tendency that we, when things happen in our lives, we blame it on our environment, what's going on around us. But when we observe it in someone else, we judge their character. We say it's a character issue. Let me give you an example. If I'm going through the grocery store and uh, I have four children, and when I had young kids, there would be times where one of my young kids would get upset at the grocery store. They wanted something that we didn't think they should have, whether it's a candy bar or a toy. And uh, my kids, when they were young, they, they didn't take the word no as, as definitive. They thought that no meant maybe. And so if we, uh, if we maybe argue a little bit or throw a little fit, bit of a fit, maybe mom and dad will change their mind. I know your kids were never that way, but this was the Calthop household. And so the fundamental attribution error, how it would play out is, man, if my kid is rolling around on the ground kicking and screaming because they didn't get a Snickers bar, it would be common for somebody to say, well, you know, my kid, he just didn't get his nap in. He just, you know, he's tired. But at the same time, when you're going through the grocery store and you see some other parent and their kid is kicking and screaming because they didn't get a toy or snack or something they want, is to blame their character. Say, you know, they are just horrible parents. What a horrible child. I mean, that, that child must be the spawn of Satan. What, what's wrong with that child? And, and you, you see the difference is, is when it comes to other people, we sort of judge their character. But when it comes to us, we sort of deflect it to what's going on in our lives and our environment and things are tough and we, we sort of rationalize. And obviously this, this is an error. Notice fundamental attribution error, how we attribute it. And as a result, we can't work together if we are judging everybody else's you know, struggles on their character and yet we're always excusing ours on the environment or the things that are going around us. And so when it comes to working on teams, there has to be an authentic, authenticity and honesty where we can take a step back and first of all, we can acknowledge when we're struggling, when we failed, and we can even hold other people accountable when they don't do what they are gonna say. In fact, this is the importance of conflict. 
If we can't hold one another accountable when we don't do what we said we were going to do, when we're not true to the things that we have pledged ourselves to, teams cannot be healthy. Now we shy away from conflict many times because conflict is awkward, it's uncomfortable. But if there's a lack of conflict on a team, that's almost always a sign that there are problems, that are troubles, that we're not being honest with one another. Your team, the teams I'm a part of, we all have it when some of us dropped the ball, we didn't, we didn't, things turn out like we were wanting it to. And if we gloss over it, not acknowledge it, maybe not do an after action review or put it on the table to discuss how we can do better, how we can improve the systems, then we're not, we're not really being honest with one another and with our constituents that we're ministering to. And so conflict is a sign that first of all, we are engaging. So I want us to, to look at conflict different. I want us to realize that conflict is a beneficial thing, not unhealthy conflict. In fact, I, I like to use the word care front, and, and that's not new with me. David Augsburger talks about care fronting rather than confronting. Because many times it's a bad connotation when we hold somebody accountable. And really, we need to understand that it's a sign that we care that we'll speak up. Many times we don't want to care front or confront somebody. We don't want to hold someone accountable because we're afraid of how they'll react. And, and we want to say that we're protecting them or we don't want to hurt them, but really the, mat, the fact of the matter is most of the times we're protecting ourselves. We don't want to feel that pain. We don't want to go through that difficulty. In fact, many times we, we confuse being nice with being kind. Being nice with being kind. Uh, we're, we're nice to people and think we're kind. Well, you can be nice without being kind because to really be kind and really to care about someone else, you'll speak the truth into their lives. What does the scripture talk about? Speaking the truth with love. It's only when we speak the truth in love that we can all grow. Our organizations will never grow if no one can speak the truth. And when we speak the truth, it's automatically going to care front somebody in our organization. Every time I preach the Word of God, teach the Word of God, there are going to be people in the congregation that when that Word comes, it, it brings conviction because it is a mirror that reveals areas of life that we need to improve, we need to adapt, we need to develop. Well, it's the same way on our teams. We are all works in progress. All of our teams need to grow and develop. None of us are there. I know some amazing teams that are out there and some of the, the most high performance teams that you would talk to, they would tell you, we've got a lot of room for improvement. And can I tell you, I've got a lot of room for improvement and so do you. And the only way we're gonna improve if people can speak into our lives. The closest to us need to be able to speak to us. We need to be able to wade into some conflict with a desire to understand and a desire to improve and a desire to grow. I think of the people that have helped me the most and they're the people that spoke the truth into my life. My wife, Rachel, I can't tell you the number of times where she has approached me and, and said, you know what, you know, and she started to speak and, and many times in the moment, I didn't like it, it felt a little painful, but afterwards I was so glad that she did, that she cared enough to speak that truth in my life. Henry Cloud talks about pain, and he says there's a difference between unproductive pain and productive pain. And he illustrates it like this. Let's say you're walking down the street and somebody shines a bright light in your face, blinding you, and you notice they have a mask on, and they take a knife and they stab you, and they take all of your money and they leave. He goes, what do you do? Well, you call the police and you tell them, I've been robbed, I've been mugged and you report it, it's a crime. But if they come get you and they put you in the back of an ambulance and they take you to a hospital and they take you into a room where they put a bright light in your face where you can't see, somebody walks in with a mask, they take out a knife and they cut you and they take all of your money, what do you call that? You call that surgery and you thank him for saving your life. Now notice, in both instances there are pain that is felt. In one, you call the police. Somebody's violated you. In another occasion, you thank them because they've saved your life. We have to understand that power of life and death and that ability that's, that's in the tongue and in our relationships and in our teams is there. And there's going to be pain that comes no matter what we try to do. That, that is the product of working with people. That's the product of teams, 
of any kind of interpersonal relationship, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your family, or the team you work on at church or work in your vocation, no matter where you go, when there are people that come together, there's gonna to be times where there's going to be conflict and there's gonna be pain because of that conflict. But healthy teams make sure it's beneficial pain. That it's not pain to hurt somebody, but it's pain to make us better and we thank them for it. So when we think about going forward into our teams, we have to realize that there's a conflict continuum. On one end is this artificial harmony that I'm never gonna speak up, no matter if it's, it's so clear that somebody has messed up or somebody didn't do what they said they were gonna do, I'm not gonna speak up no matter what because of what might happen. At the other end of the continuum are mean-spirited attacks. And that's when somebody messes up that we just attack them and, and we, we hurt them and name calling and all those unhealthy things that take place. And so the healthy part is not on one end where we're just artificial harmony, harmony nor is it on the under, other end where there's mean-spirited attacks, but it's somewhere in the middle where we can speak into somebody else's life, not mean-spirited, not to hurt, but where we can improve or be better, something that in the long run they will thank us for. In fact, if you'll look back and reflect, the person you are today would not be who you are if somebody at time hadn't spoken truth into your life. So when we think about our teams, let's make sure that these are places that we build trust because of our character. And when there's conflict, that we manage it in a way that's healthy. That we do not just go along to get along, but neither are we mean-spirited or hurt, but that we care for one another and that we love one another and part of loving one another is speaking the truth to one another. And here is a very important point as well, is that when we do have people on our teams that make mistakes, we always need to create a soft landing for them. Not a hard landing, a soft landing. We want them to realize that yes, this was a mistake. Yes, we, we dropped the ball here, but that's not the end. We're gonna get up and we're gonna get it right the next time. We wanna encourage them even as we hold them accountable and even as we confront maybe behavior that has taken place. And so thank you for joining me as we're talking about teams and working together in uh, our organizations. When it's all said and done, we want God to get glory of the things that we do because whether it's in the church or it is in our vocation in a secular environment, we are salt and light and we wanna live in a manner in our leadership and our followership that will draw people to Jesus Christ. So thank you for joining us today. Tell somebody about our Leadership Minute here at Urshan College and join us next time. We look forward to seeing you then. God bless you, see you next time.